In this video, we'll look at the anterior superficial forearm muscles, their attachments, actions, innervations, and blood supply. Here's a little mnemonic to help you remember what these superficial forearm muscles are. Each finger represents one of the muscles. The index finger would be pronator teres, the middle finger would be flexor carpi radialis, the ring finger would be palmaris longus, and the pinky would be flexor carpi ulnaris. So remember, pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. Now that you know what the muscles are, let's look at the details of each muscle. The first of the anterior forearm muscles we'll look at is the pronator teres. This two-headed muscle attaches to the humerus, the ulna, and the radius. Remember, the radius is the bone named for its ability to turn in a circle. Specifically, the pronator teres will originate from two structures. The humeral head of the muscle originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. The ulnar head of the muscle originates from the coronoid process of the ulna. Both heads will insert upon the middle third of the shaft of the radius. Named for what it does, this muscle acts to, you guessed it, pronate the forearm. It's innervated by the median nerve. In fact, the median nerve passes between the two heads, running underneath the humeral head to continue down the forearm. This is significant because if the pronator teres were to hypertrophy, become inflamed, or tight, it could compress or entrap the median nerve and mimic symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. When this happens, it's called pronator teres syndrome. This is important to know so a proper diagnosis can be made and so the proper treatment can be administered. You wouldn't want to mistakenly operate on the carpal tunnel when the cause of the problem is really located someplace else. The pronator teres receives its blood supply from the ulnar and radial arteries. Next up we've got flexor carpi radialis. This muscle attaches to the humerus and the hand. Specifically, the flexor carpi radialis originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and inserts onto the base of the second and third metacarpals in the hand. Note it does not attach to the radius, even though radius is in the name. The flexor carpi radialis is also named for what it does when it contracts. When it contracts, it'll perform its name, flex the hand at the wrist and radially deviate the hand at the wrist. When a muscle radially deviates the hand, it moves the hand toward the radius instead of the ulna. Radially deviating the hand is the same as abduction or abduction of the hand at the wrist. But saying that can be confusing for first timers, so I like to say radially deviate instead. It seems more descriptive and less confusing. It too is innervated by the median nerve, and it receives its blood supply from the radial and ulnar arteries. The next anterior forearm muscle we'll look at is the palmaris longus. Interesting thing about this muscle is that it's absent in about 15% of the population. Some people have it missing on both sides, and I've even seen some people only have it missing on one side. You can check to see if you have one by flexing your wrist against resistance to see if that tendon pops up. The palmaris longus attaches to the humerus and the hand. Specifically, it originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum and inserts onto the palmar aponeurosis in the hand. The palmar aponeurosis is an expanded tendinous structure in the palm of the hand that helps to anchor things in place and prevent bowing of the flexor tendons that lie underneath. When the palmaris longus contracts, it acts to pull the hand into flexion at the wrist. It's innervated by the median nerve and receives its blood supply from the ulnar artery. The last of the superficial anterior forearm muscles is the flexor carpi ulnaris. This is also a two-headed muscle. It attaches to the humerus, ulna, and hand. Specifically, the thick humeral head of the flexor carpi ulnaris originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus, and the thinner ulnar head originates from the shaft of the ulna. The heads converge and insert onto three structures, the pisiform, the hook of the hamate, and the base of the fifth metacarpal. 
The flexor carpi ulnaris is also named for what it does when it contracts. When it contracts, it acts to flex the hand at the wrist and ulnar deviate the hand at the wrist. When a muscle ulnar deviates the hand, it moves the hand toward the ulna instead of the radius. Ulnar deviating the hand is the same as adduction or adduction of the hand at the wrist. The flexor carpi ulnaris is innervated by the ulnar nerve which passes between the two heads. This is different from other superficial anterior forearm muscles, so make note of this. It's innervated by the ulnar nerve, not the median nerve. This muscle will also receive its blood supply from the ulnar artery. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted to all my latest videos. For more helpful anatomy and physiology study resources, visit www.humanbodyhealth.com.